Actually, okay. I was hoping, I was hoping um, as many people were here today that have been working on plans lately, the last two weeks, and this kind of turned out to be like a three-week series, where the first week we were talking about like Habakkuk, where he went to the Lord and he asked questions about what's going on. There's so much turmoil in the country and, and just around him and people's lives in the nation of Judah that he went to the Lord and said, Lord, you know, what do I do? And, and he listened. He, he paused and he listened. And the Lord says, okay, take out your tablets, which is a different thing nowadays. Take out your tablets. <laughs> and write this down so that people know. So he wrote down all these, these messages that the Lord was giving him. It basically was planning. And then last week we talked about making adjustments in your plan. And the reason why we're doing this is because, you know, the new year is coming up. And this season we think about Christmas and the new year. And I didn't want to get to January and have people think, okay, wow, the new year's here already. We're prepping for the new year, right? We're prepping for the changes and the adjustments that we need to make to get closer to God. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So today we're going to kind of finish that off. And, uh, but I want to talk to you real quick. Um, I'm going to give you this Bible verse. Psalms 27.4. The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek the most, the one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek the most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in His temple. Does anybody remember a movie called City Slickers with Billy Crystal? <laughs> You remember that? Yeah. I was going to try to show the scene of when Billy Crystal was talking to Jack Palance. They were cowboys in that. You know, it was modern day, but it was, well, 1991. <laughs> but they were out in the range driving, you know, cows through Montana or something. And Pastor Rick, and that's what you did, right? All right, John Wayne. So uh, for those of you kids, uh, Clint Eastwood, uh, no. Who's John Wayne? They don't make Westerns anymore, do they? So. There's had this really, this, this really cool scene where it was kind of poignant, where they were, they were on their horses and they were talking about life and what made a difference in his life about love. And he was going through tough times. Billy Chris was going through tough, tough times and he was thinking, it's just not doing it for, for him anymore. He's missing something. And the older cowboy says, you know, you guys all come around here about the same age, looking for the meaning of life, and you think a couple of weeks is going to undo all this turmoil that you've been missing your entire life. And he turns to, you know, Billy Crystal and he says, you know what the secret of life is? And he goes, what? He goes, it's one thing. One thing. And he says, well, what's that one thing? And the older cowboy says, yeah, that's for you to find out. If you can figure out what that one thing is, then everything falls in place and nothing else matters. Amen. Remember that movie, right? So think about this again. Psalm 27, 4. The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek the most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in His temple. See, that one thing to David who wrote this was being in the presence of the Lord and worshiping and loving God. King David is saying, you gather with others. You gather in the temple and you praise and you worship God because being in his presence is the one thing that is my priority. That presence of the Lord every moment of the day. Knowing that this is my focus, to love you and to lift you up forever. That's the translation of what King David's saying. By the way, little bunny trail. So I have this Bible for the last, I don't know, 15 years or so. And I'm looking through it. I'm going, I've got to get to Psalm 27. As I look through the Bible and, I'm, and, I, and I get to Psalm 27, I see these doodles. You know what that is, Allison? <laughs> so there's this pink pen written in, in my page and it says this is Allison's favorite verse with hearts so you probably wrote that when you were like fifth grade, fifth grade? what is that 11 12 yeah, 11 or 12 that thought that was so cool to me that was like confirmation see today's message we're gonna complete what we've been doing the last couple of weeks planning and preparing and those adjustments that we need for the upcoming new year and to focus on that one thing that we need to do 
can make all these plans of God just burst out in us. See, we've been working on making a godly plan the last three services or so. And the next year, what we want to do is clear things out that are holding us back from a closer relationship to our God. We don't want to wait for New Year to get here. And I keep saying that. I don't want to wait. Because it jumps on you, doesn't it, right? You wake up like January 1st, 2nd, 3rd. You go, I can't believe it's 2016 already. But we're going to be prepared. Amen? Amen. So by the time January 1st rolls around, we're going to have a pretty good idea of what we need to adjust in our life. What we need to start doing, stop doing, or continue doing. So that we can have the best relationship with God possible. Live our lives for Him and follow that ultimate plan that He has for us. And the things that we've been working on and writing down. See, hopefully, I really pray that most of us have started on this plan already. If by some chance you haven't, we have some extra copies in the back. It's a little two-page of what we planned out, what we're going to do for the Lord. And on the other side is some Bible verses that would help you. We have three sections in that plan. What we need to do for God. Our plan to show our love and obedience to God, whether it's devotionals or pray together more or Bible studies or just meditate more, or shut the door, turn off the lights, turn off the TV, turn off the cell phone, get into a quiet place and just be in the presence of God. That we strive every day to please Him in everything that we do. The second part is God says, you know, bring your request to me. You don't have because you don't ask. If you have burdens, take them off and lay them down at my feet. So the second part of this plan was our personal prayer request, no matter how small, no matter how big. It might include like uh, prayers for your family. Not just to go to your family and say, this person has a problem, that person has a problem. What you need to do is you need to go to the Lord and say, Lord, what can I do to help this person get closer with you? To be able to pray for your family members and say, you know, Lord, I'm going to intercede. I'm just going to pray for them. That's what I'm going to do right now. Or maybe you have something like job problems, financial problems, maybe your safety, your health, etc. Whatever you have that you need to overcome, personal, emotional, spiritual, mental, whatever, that's what we need to focus on when we go to the Lord. Lord, how can I be in your will in these issues? The third part, the most important part, is this praise report. When God completes something, or even if it's not quite done yet, to still give thanks to God in everything. Everything. Thank you. Amen. So, so no matter what you guys are going through, to go, see what, Lord, here's what I don't know is happening, but you're in control, you're sovereign, I don't get it, but you do. So you know what? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. So you give praise reports. And when something gets completed, you kind of scratch it off your, your, um, your plan and you move it into the praise section. That's what we're going to focus on today. That one thing that we can start that will make everything else in God's plan for us just start to fall in place. See, the weird thing is most times, especially in the last, I, I was looking at the certificates on my wall for being a pastor. I put them on my desk to remind me not to be proud, but to keep me humble and go, I have, I'm doubly accountable. I'm, I need to be living the things the right way that the Lord has for me. So I started thinking that most times when I've talked to people, I started noticing something. People would talk to me and say, you know, if it just wasn't for this one thing, if just this one thing in my life, if there's one thing God can help me with, there's one thing I can work on, or one thing I can get past, that's what we're going to focus on. Here's your highlight. Because usually, that's how action plans start to move. You look for a roadblock or something that's holding back, like a breakthrough. One thing you need to add or delete that you can focus on, that one thing that is in the way of everything else. I don't know, how many of you guys play Candy Crush? <laughs> All right. So, no? Okay, well, my wife does. So. <laughs> okay. It's out now. So... You, you, can just, you can just hit this one thing, this one multicolored ball or something. You just focus on building it, and when you get to it, you hit it, and all these things just start to fall in place, right? All these things get moved out. These, and if you notice, I know you're not a Candy Crush player, but this just came to me, so bear with me. But there's these blocks, and if you do things in just the right way, and you plan it, and you look at it, and you hit that one multi-ball thing, all these things start breaking. That's what we're going to look for. See, King David wrote Psalm 27. He said the one thing to King David was to be in God's presence. 
in his house with his people, singing and loving one God. So what does Jesus say about this one thing that we need to focus on in our lives? Luke 10, 38 through 42. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by this big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I'm doing all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But Jesus said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. And Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken from her. Translation, the one thing Jesus was saying was just to be in the Lord's presence. Just what David had said. And just love him. That's the one thing that Mary discovered and nobody could take that away from her. Mary was going to be in the presence of the Lord whether she was at Jesus' feet or out and about or working or whatever she was doing. That would not be, in take, not be taken away from her. She would be in the presence of the Lord forever just like David said. The one thing that we need to focus on in this new year as it approaches is to make our plans and then adjust our lives to have the best relationship with God ever, ever. To put the past behind and focus on that future that God has for us. Because the one thing to strive for every day of our lives is to be in the presence of God. Love Him. Spend time praying, Amen. thanking him, praising him for how awesome he is. And the, one of the most important things that we talked about last week was to love God and then love others as the way he loves us. The Apostle Paul, who I just love, love, love Paul. He wrote a letter to the Philippian church to thank them for this gift. And in case you know who Paul was, he used to be Saul, Saul was radically transformed saw Jesus face to face. Paul was so radically transformed from his old life to his new life. And that was, that's a different message, but <laughs> I relate to that because that's how I felt. I was, I'm so different than I used to be. The Apostle Paul wrote this letter to the Philippian church to thank them for a gift. And this letter was really joyful. He thanks them and shares with the people of the church to be content. He was writing his, his message, says, be content. No matter the circumstances, no matter what happens in your life, joy should be with us in good times or tough times. He was saying that the love, the joy, the peace, that presence of God should be with us no matter where we are, no matter what we're going through. He starts talking about the one thing that should give us joy. Being in the presence of Christ Jesus. And not that he's been perfect or achieved everything possible that he could have achieved. But Paul wants to press on, keep going, no matter what, to get to know Christ as much as possible, to be in his presence forever, knowing that that's going to get him eternity with Jesus. That's his goal. Philippians 3, 13, 14. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. But I focus on this one thing. Again, Paul says, I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. And what Paul is saying, that one thing is to be in the presence of Jesus. Now, strive for that, knowing that that's going to get him to be with Jesus for eternity. Today, we're going to pray about that one thing. And my message is almost over. It's going to be pretty short. See, that one thing that places God in our hearts, that's holding everything back, keeping us from remaining in God's presence and having even a deeper relationship with God. I'm going to give you some details, and then we're going to do a little activity. The one thing you either want to do in life 
or the one thing you want to get rid of in your life or the one thing that you need help from God to bring you closer to Him. I'm going to give you some details. I need you to focus in a little bit. It could be something you need to do for God or even something you need to get rid of in your life. See, it's so important, like Paul was saying, to forget the past. We cannot bring the things that we've had in our past in this last year that didn't please God into this next year. We can't. So we've got to do something different. So to kickstart this, we have a little plan here to get you into the will of God and develop a deeper relationship with Him. I'm going to have the ushers hand you a piece of paper and some pens. And while they're getting to you, I'm going to wait. We're going to write something down on a piece of paper. The one thing in your life that you think is holding you back from the one thing God calls us to do to be in His presence. What's that one thing that maybe is around you that you can say, Lord, this one thing, if, if I could just deal with this one thing, I believe everything else would just, just fall down. So here are some thoughts for you to consider as you think about this one thing. It could be something really positive or it could be something that you're struggling with. See, but we want to get to the root issues positive or negative, not symptoms. So I'm going to break it down for you a little bit. It could be that one thing that will open up a stronger, deeper relationship with God. And think about it this way. It may not be health issues or money troubles or family problems. So the one thing may not be, Lord, my wife, my husband, my niece, my nephew, my sister, brother, best friend, you know, uncle, brother-in-law, father-in-law. See, think about it this way. It could be that the one thing that you have a problem with, it's not really this symptom. It's how you handle it. It could be the one thing that opens up a stronger, deeper relationship with God. It's not that health issue, money problem, but how we handle, think of Job. No matter the family tragedies, the health, anything that came across him, he would not get out of the presence of God. How you handle things is what we're going for this morning. Any anger, any jealousy, any envy, any unforgiveness towards someone, addictions, drug, alcohol, lust, any gossip, any vulgar negative thing. See, those are roots. Those are something that we have to deal with. So sometimes we have problems with people. It's not so much the person, it's the way we're handling it, the way we're loving them. And if the one thing that's holding us from a relationship with God that's even stronger and deeper, you may not think, okay, things are going pretty fine. You may not think that there's something you need to do with that way. You need to spend time maybe more reading, studying, learning His Word, serving others, volunteering. Maybe we haven't shown appreciation in the past because things are going pretty good and you think you don't need God. So you've been kind of ignoring Him. Maybe you need to love the people around you as God loves you. Or even if everything that you look at, you know, God, everything's all right. Maybe it's pride. Maybe it's a lack of trust in God. See, the one thing King David, Paul, and Jesus spoke of was, is to be in God's presence. Habakkuk went to the Lord, went into the presence of the Lord, stood on the watchtower, talked to him, and then listened. Everything comes down to being in God's presence. David was saying, being in the presence of the Lord in his house with people praising him, that gave me strength. Just worshiping God gives me strength. It clarifies things for me. Loving God and spending time with him. So, one last thing. If you're not too sure about what that one thing in your life is, some people may say, Lord, I don't know what it is. I just don't feel connected to you sometimes. I, I just feel alone. But you can't put your finger on what that one thing is that would break everything. Write that down. Say, Lord, reveal that one thing to me. Show it to me. Let me stay in your presence, sing, worship you, love you. Please reveal that one thing to me. And I'm going to give you some ideas from these scriptures for you to focus on.
as you write down this one thing. Remember, God loves you. And he wants you in his presence always. He desires to have this awesome relationship with you. See, God thinks, and we did a message on this last year, God thinks you're marvelous. God thinks you have unlimited value, that you're unique, that there's nobody like you. Because there isn't. He knows every hair on your head. He knew you while you were still in your mother's womb. He also says that you are a new creation. That no matter what you've dealt with in your past, even what you're dealing with right now, you can be a new person. You can be a new creation in Christ, leaving those things in the past and moving forward. Because the one thing that we can be sure of is God will never leave us, never forsake us. His love, his joy, his peace, it never fails. It never quits. It is always with you. Lastly, you don't need to write down a paragraph. I wrote down one word. God knows my heart. If I just put a check mark or an X, God knows exactly what I'm looking at, what I'm thinking of, what I'm talking about. No names, no nothing. We're just going to get up. We're going to take these as Pastor Rick's going to say a prayer. And then the worship team's going to play. But the worship team, please don't come up until you're done. I'll go up there first. Write it down. And as you finish, carefully, drop it at the foot of the cross in that little basket. We'll pray over them together. And then we'll just, we'll get rid of them. Okay, does that sound all right? Yeah. It's like a good way to start the year. So I'm going to have Pastor Rick come up and pray over him.